You know, sometimes it's a tool Tuesday. You know, play guitar. Uh, tool is fun. It's easy. You play a lot of D riffs. Drop D. Drop D for my name. I'm Aristotle. I'm Aristotle Full Throttle, and this is the Aristotle Full Throttle Show, and I'm going to play guitar for you. I'm going to talk about the news. I'm going to talk about what's going on with you. What's going on with you? We talk about the news of the day. We talk about uh, topical, relevant matters, hot topics, as it were. Just think of me as uh, the view, but it's just me. You know what I mean? I'm Wendy Williams. I'm the new Wendy Williams, except I won't pass out as much, I promise. Maybe I will, if it'll get me... Uh, views and you can subscribe and share and like these videos and if you have uh you know if you want to if you have a suggestion if you want something to for me to play uh, go ahead and uh, let me know because otherwise i'll just sit here and jam in between i'll be intermittent with my guitar playing and hopefully you'll enjoy that oh, you couldn't even hear that could you how about that let me see if, uh, could you? Probably not. <laughs> Let me try it again. Hmm. How about that? Can you hear that? No, you can't. Great. I'll start over. Hey, anyway, it's fun. Oh, this is why you can't hear it. This is what, there's a reason for it. I should just do that intro again. I'm just going to do the intro again. Because why not? Probably couldn't even hear it. And I didn't get it right the first time, so I'll, get, I'll do it again. I'll edit this out of the podcast. I was just talking about the uh, drop D riffs. <laughs> uh, yeah, we managed to do it that time. I'll just do the intro again. I'm Aristotle Full Throttle. This is the Aristotle Full Throttle Show. We do whatever we want here. We just talk, and it's fun, and we have a good time. We talk about the rel relevant topics of the day. We talk about the news. It's hot topics. I'm your Wendy Williams, except I won't pass out as much. Hey, Phenomenotics, welcome to the show. If you have any requests on as to what I should play on the guitar, I'm happy to entertain them. Also, I'm happy to talk about movies and TV shows and things that are going on in the news. My new favorite meme is that of Homelander from The Boys, the last moment of season three, where, uh, you know, spoiler alert, Homelander goes a little berserk, and then uh, somehow, at the same time is rewarded for his terrible behavior because he's a narcissist and that's what that's what the world is really the world is really all about rewarding people for their bad behavior and failing upwards so here's to failing upwards feel free to donate to this show so we can fail upwards to a new computer so that there won't be uh, as many technical difficulties and you know more episodes i'm very happy last month we had some more subscribers for uh, on twitch so if you're not a subscriber i don't know what to do. i'm gonna play some songs for you i'm gonna play, i'm gonna play this one i was trying to play this one yesterday i wasn't quite let me see if i could do this one
go something like that. You know, I just got a request uh, in the chat. Thank you for uh, feel free to jump in. Uh, Corrupter says, "Tell us about a well-directed movie you're, you've watched recently." A well-directed movie that I watched recently. Well, I gotta say, there was a movie called Booksmart. You guys should watch. It's very well-directed. Directed by uh, Olivia Wilde. Yeah, that's just so chuggy. I love it. Oh, it's very good. It's, got, it's excellently acted. It's excellently written, and it's perfect. It's got every scene's got a button on it. It's very funny. Uh, it's a very, very funny movie and very well executed, very well directed movie. It's all directed too. It's all very well directed. You should check it out. Uh, I didn't hear nothing about that movie till the other day because apparently people don't talk about that movie as much as they should. might know them as a band called Tool. You might, or you might not. A lot of people hate them. Uh, they're very, they're very good. <laughs> they're very nerdy. A lot of people are like, I don't get it. And it's like, okay, fine. You don't have to get it. That's like what people are like with movies. I like movies that some other people don't like. And apparently a lot of people didn't talk about the movie Booksmart, but the movie Booksmart was very well, well made. Um, and I think there's something out there for everybody. And if you don't like something, you don't have to bash what someone else likes. I'm just saying, you know, don't yuck someone else's yum. Some people like things that you don't like it gives them though think about it this way the same feeling that you get when you experience something that you do like so don't try to take that away from someone else okay it's really stupid i'm supposed to play an italian guy I'm supposed to play an italian guy like this it's a me uh in a, my next audition i'm gonna audition i'm supposed to speak italian but listen to this well be messed it up. You know, I like heavy. I like heavy riffs. Oh, yuck my yum. Uh, you know, I think it's important that we... I think Dave Grohl said it best when he said, there's no guilty pleasures. There's no guilty pleasure. Just freaking love, love a thing, you know? If you love a thing, you're lucky. You know, There's something out there that you love that gives you joy. That's a lucky deal. It's a lucky deal. Don't take that away from somebody. Don't try to tell somebody. Don't try to shame people. Uh, <laughs> did that phenomenonic asks, did I say I wasn't drop D? Whatever gave you that impression? Um, whatever, whatever made you think that?
You know, I do like heavy. This is Drop D. You can hear songs such as... Uh, like that. That goes like... Just do any riff. You just play a lot of. You just play the. You know, like this, and you're good. You're good for about six eighths. Six eight time. You tell what sounds better. You tell me. Um, I am in drop D. Indeed, I'm in drop D. Although some people will have me playing drop. Say, hey, there's a t- tune in called Dad Gad, and you should play that. I'm like, listen, my mind gets confused. I get confused with it. Play the old Vader song. Sort of. Um, a song called All For You. Google it. Go look up up on Spotify. Veda, All For You. Get us some please. Um, I really did like that movie I saw the other day because the characters felt real. It felt like a, a movie that I hadn't seen before. It was kind of like... Um, it was kind of like that movie uh, Super Bad. Because... Uh, it was just like a high school coming of age story. And I liked it. You should like it too. Cause you cause you guys should like whatever I like. Cause we all yum our yums together. I also just watched the most recent episode of Only Murders in the Building. It is a good show with Steve Martin and Martin Short. Steve Martin Short. And Serena Williams. Sorry, Selena Gomez. That's who it is. And she's fantastic. Do I have a favorite film soundtrack, says Phenomenautics? Uh, right off the bat comes to my head is the movie Singles. You ever see the movie Singles? It's such a good soundtrack because it's got like the song that goes... Like, That's the first song on the album, I think. It's Wood by... Uh, by Alice in Chains and it's kind of an interesting way to start an album I think it is first maybe it's the last one uh, that's, uh, that soundtrack is excellent of course you got Pulp Fiction with the I gotta listen to Dick Dale and uh, the that's a song called Miserloo by Dick Dale. Check it out! It's a great soundtrack. That is, we're going back to the '90s now. That is uh, <laughs> Pulp Fiction's. Oh, was a good. That's a good soundtrack. Also, the soundtrack. What song that is at the end? The soundtrack. This is the last song on a, on a, in a movie. It's a credit song.
think it goes like that. It's also in drop D. How about it? Uh, also, soundtracks going back. There's a lot of good soundtracks in the last few years. Uh, mostly, mostly Tarantino movies have some excellent soundtracks. I did like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That was a great movie. It's one of my favorite movies of the last 10 years. Phenomenonics asks, have you ever covered Two Princes by Spin Doctors? Nope. Phenomenonics also asks, wake up by Ray Isaac Guess Machine from The Matrix. That's right. That's one of my favorite guitar players. His name is uh, Tom Morello, and you should check him out more or less. It's like a, he does a lot of good stuff. I'm, I'm drop D. I'm not playing. Um, yeah, he's great. He's great. You gotta check that. All Rage Against the Machine songs kick ass, though. I, I agree. Yeah, I was playing this one last week. That's the coolest part when you go like this. I can almost do it. One more try. One more time. I'm gonna try it again. Did it. I'll never do it again. <laughs> it's so hard. It's so hard. Trust me. Tom Morello sounds like he's just hitting notes. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So good. make all the faces to different moods see i do like all those songs uh yeah yeah that's a song called it goes like this that's, yeah 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 that's a song called yeah for real oh just throw out a word and it'll probably remind me of a song <laughs> let's play a game you say something and I'll tell you what song it reminds me of. Yeah is a song that is by Usher featuring Lil Jon. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a fun game. Bananas. That's bananas. What out of here? That's, that's crazy. Uh, that's bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. That's it's bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S by Gwen Stefani. Come on. Everybody knows that. Everybody is reminded. How about B.O.B. by Outkast? That's a good song, though. I can't play that, though. I give up. I throw in the towel. You win. You win this round. <laughs> you know, I met Andre 3000. Let me tell you the story. I met Andre 3000. I was in Atlanta, Georgia with my band. We was touring. And uh, we were in Atlanta, Georgia. And you got to stop at Guitar Center when you're at Atlanta, Georgia because you need new strings and new patch cables and stuff. And I always found it funny that I could go anywhere in the country Go walk up to the counter at a guitar center and say, hey, I need a patch cord. And they would go like this. Uh, yeah, you bought this patch cord in, uh, three years ago at this guitar center on Long Island in Glen, in Glen Cove or whatever. They'll tell me my entire history of purchases at Guitar Center. They'll let me know that 20 years ago I bought bass strings. However, the United States healthcare system cannot do that yet. <laughs> We're just getting to that, where we could be like, oh, you went to the doctor for this. It's all sorts of rules and stuff, but it's also the infrastructure is terrible. You cannot, the information is terrible. I say I'm so Italian because I'm like 
almost a third Italian. I got to play a guy with an Italian accent. I'm auditioning for a, four episodes on a TV show on Netflix, and I'm trying to be, I got to be Italian. What if I do this, though? Look. Look at me. I'm, a, I'm an Italian. What if I start throwing people? Listen, I could say this. If I pull my hair back like this, I could be Italian. See? I'm a Italian brown, a brown Italian. Um, I've just have been outside it too long, you know? Uh, so I, we went to Guitar Center, and right in front of us was a car. It was, it was a Ford Explorer, and out pops a little man with cornrows and a pink Izod shirt. And we said, that's Andre 3000. We're musicians, and we can recognize other musicians, especially when they're going into Guitar Center. And uh, so I said to him, I said to the guys, let's go say hi. And then we were in Guitar Center, and we walk, and we naturally just bump into, you know, just bump into Andre 3000. And we said, hey, Andre, you got that, uh, that album was so good, and that other album was so good. Thank you for being so good at, the, you know, and he said, hey, yeah. We said, hey, yeah. That's not how it goes. How's that goes? Uh, hey, uh, hey, uh. But uh, yeah, we met him. He was very nice, very soft-spoken, very little man. Also, he uh, signed a $100 bill for our singer because his name is Andre Benjamin. And we were just like, that was right after we were like, we're a poor band on the road. And our singer's like, hey, by the way, can you sign this $100 bill that I'm just going to frame? And we said... You know, out of all of the reasons our singer is stupid, that's one of them. Hey, you know what? Um, yeah, that was cool. We met Andre. He's very cool. Very nice. Pink Izod shirt. Remember that. Let me play this song for you. Unless you have another another song. Thanks for saying cool story, bro. I messed up. in my ears song prompt swords swords uh let's see sword sword I don't know. it it kind of it just reminds me of led zeppelin actually where it's like uh into the land of the ice and snow <laughs> immigrant song swords Swords. Does anybody know a song with swords in it? Is that how swords go? Um, I'll just keep playing swords until I think of something. This song's called The Pop. short shorts
Anyway, uh, that's what happens when you play The Pot by The Tool. Um, that sometimes will happen. It seems like more people are tuning in because I'm doing that, so I'm going to keep doing that. And if you have a song prompt that will remind me of a song, put it in the chat. I'm interested. <laughs> play it yet. There's a very good question in the chat, and I'm, I'm thinking it over. Thinking it over. Thinking it over. That reminds me of the song by, uh, where he's like, I don't think in it over anyway. You know what I mean? I'm saying. <laughs> Almost had it. It's in my head. You know what I'm saying? I almost got it. I know what you're talking about, phenomenotics. Tough one here. Can you play the main title theme? I can. I can. That, by the way, is my favorite John Williams um, theme music. Is the ET sound? Is the soundtrack? It's my favorite one out of all of his compositions. Oh, almost at it. Oh my goodness. That's a good one to learn. Pulling deep into my brain right now. Oh my goodness. Oh, let me think about it. Oh, that sounds so perfect. I'll make it musical. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, 
I'll practice that one. That's one of my favorite ones because here's why. It's got two great movements because it goes... It does that part, but better than I can play on guitar right now. And then it does... It Uh, yeah, you know, part it's got like the second movement. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'll get it, I'll get it. Ah, changes modes. What? <laughs> good one it's a good one uh it's one of my favorites actually indeed it... soundtrack to et the best one best john williams guess what guess what i have and maybe you don't but maybe you do also i have tickets to see john williams hopefully he makes it another couple weeks so he can conduct the orchestra at the hollywood bowl because you know john williams is 117 years old john williams has been around since before movies were made that's why he knows how to make soundtracks because he said i invented movies John Williams invented the movie soundtrack, the modern movie soundtrack. It is very great. Um, thank you, Phenomenotics, for complimenting my musical memory. Uh, if there's one thing I have, it's a... Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a good, mem uh, good memory. That's the metal version. I like to make everything a little bit spicy, a little, little season, a little metal in there. Because <laughs> ET doesn't, it's not metal enough, even though it's dope. <laughs> saying you guys remember this one because it's all famous now it's all been popular right now this is like all the rage right now I'll play it again i've been playing this every day this week so see if i can get play it better this time uh let me see if i can play it along with the song because everybody's so stoked about this song right now and i'm like this song i learned when i was a baby kid <laughs> Turn it up. <laughs> One second, let me start again. <laughs> oh, it starts again, my bad. So, so, shows how much I know. He's the guy. He had to play this. Oh, I'm see. I'm seeing a spoiler. My wrist has seized up. Way to go, James Hetfield. <laughs> is done for it's a weird position but yeah that's a tough one that's a tough one
I mean, it's heavy metal. I'm going to practice that one too every day. Come back. Looking forward to Metal Jurassic Park. <laughs> I don't know how to play the rest out, but it goes. <laughs> Good golly. Jurassic Park, get out of here with that. I love it. It's That is also, also awesome. Soundtrack. Orchestra played Enter Sandman in an episode of this season's Westworld. Yeah, Westworld's playing a lot of 90s music on like the player piano. They played like Radiohead and Soundgarden and stuff like that. I'm into it, except it's on Westworld, which I'm not into. Sorry. Sorry, Westworld. Not that cool. Not as good as it thinks it is, except the first season. Listen, I was watching Westworld, the first season of Westworld. And I said, everybody is going crazy about this show. And every episode, they were like, it's a map. There's a map. And then there'd be like people sitting naked. And then there'd be people in like the, the western town. And then there'd be people getting worked on. And they'd be like, it's a map. It's a map. It was smart, though, because they were playing like the player piano because it was a different era. So the player piano was playing modern hits from like 25 years ago. Cool. Cool idea. Except here's the thing. Spoiler alert. It's not that exciting. <laughs> it wasn't that good. It was boring me. I got so bored with the show Westworld. Halfway through season one, I was like, this show sucks. I can't stand it. It's boring. It's dragging out. And then there was one moment where Jeffrey Wright said, oh, I don't see anything strange. Uh, Jeffrey Wright, the way he talks and everything he does is very, he's always whispering and mumbling. I guess he hears his voice. Anyway, um, that moment was cool. And then the rest of the set, the second half of season one was cool. I just did not care enough to go back. I do not care. It's, look, I don't want to yuck your yum. <laughs> For me, Westworld was dumb. Killeen says, it finally got good again this season. <laughs> Killeen's one of those people that like, they, they go like this. Listen, have you seen Down on the Upside, the, the TV show? <laughs> Just, it's, it, it's like, it gets excellent four seasons. Once you hit the fourth season, it's amazing. You got to go about 40 episodes before it gets good. <laughs> Not willing to go that far. Not going to commit to 40 episodes before I decide uh, I'm going to watch a show. It better catch me right away in the first episode, like the boys did, and it better keep going. <laughs> it finally got good again. That's what everybody says. They're like, listen, you just got to get past that first 47 episodes. And then once it, then it's amazing. <laughs> you just got to invest like more than a week worth of work into this show before it gets good. Uh, the polite was the plot line. Sorry, the plot line was genuinely fascinating and fairly straightforward. I think they they wasted their their big gotcha hook in the first season, Colleen. I I just I saw that and I said, okay, all right, this show's kind of like got nowhere to go now. I don't know. I th I hear a lot of people disappointed with it. It doesn't look like anything to me. It doesn't look like anything to me. That was my Jeffrey Wright impression. How right is that? How right am I with that? Uh, everything he says, he's the watcher. He's watching everything. Oh no, everything he says is like this. I'm practicing for my audition. I don't expect you to like it. I don't like it most of the time. Yeah, Colleen, why do you do this to yourself? Why do you watch a show you don't like most of the time? <laughs> A 
That's what I have to say about it. It's kind of a Master of Puppets type of show, though. I've actually, on the background, when I'm working on spreadsheets, that's the kind of show it is. Listen, if you have a lot of spreadsheets to do, this show might entertain you while it's on in the background. That's what we're going for. That's what I'm going for here at Aristotle Full Throttle. If you uh, have a lot of TPS reports going on right now in your life, this show will be good to have on in the background because i got opinions. I'll play guitar for you. <laughs> I'll do all sorts of things. You guys want to... Uh, what we do in the shadows, dude. Phenomenotics, that's phenomenal that you say that because I just got recently into what we do in the shadows and I am on season three and a half right now and it's, it's so good. Maybe four. What season am I on? I don't even remember. Maybe... See, new, the new season, season four, right? It's so good. It's so good. I want to be on... Listen, I'm putting this... I'm throwing my hat in the ring. I want to be on what we do in the shadows. They don't have enough brown, brown vampires. From sta- I'm from Long Island. I'm basically, I'm from, I'm basically, I could be like a Staten Island OG vampire and I could just be joking around. I think I could do it. I took, I took lots of improv classes <laughs> and they write their stuff. I want to be, let us campaign that I will be on what we do in the shadows. I'm 10 feet tall. I'll be like a big monstrous. Maybe I'll be a swear wolf. I'll be the first swear wolf. I'll just be out there. Beep, 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 beep. I've been bleeped on TV before. I ain't afraid of it. I'll be a, an actual swear wolf. Let's do a campaign. Full throttle. Full throttle. Going to be on this season of what we do in the shadows. Look, me and Taika YTT, the only brown people on the show. It's a good show. And a lot of people say I look or at least remind them of Jermaine Clement. My face, he's got like a big face. I got like a big face like him and he wears glasses. But he's from New Zealand. He's a Kiwi. Uh, I would vote for that. Why not? As far as soundtracks go, what are some great soundtracks that have come out this century? A lot of E.T. Like, as far as theme music, E.T. is one of my favorites. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Very good. And, uh... You're a soundtrack nerd, kind of OG James Horner. James Horner is great. Hey, if you're a soundtrack nerd, Phenomenotics, you should check out the uh, the um, the Hans Zimmer uh, song song exploder episode. It's a podcast called Song Exploder. It's excellent. It's very excellent. He does a he does a breakdown for his theme music for the Dune soundtrack for the Dune theme music, the original theme music. Um, it's very impressive. It's very impressive. Uh, um, his thought process. Hans Zimmer. Very, very good. Je- uh, James Horner. Very good. James Horner. What? Let me see if I could play some James Horner for you. I could do it. play my heart will go on <laughs> um good golly i can't i can't quite 
nail it in my head. But uh, these are all songs that are uh, like if I was better at guitar, <laughs> I'm pretty good at guitar. Listen, I'm pretty good at guitar. I've made money playing guitar for a while. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but uh, I just haven't practiced any of these songs. You had to go with Titanic, though. I did. I did, because I wanted to remind everybody that James Horner also wrote that for the flute and for Celine Dion. <laughs> oh, how does it go? Yeah, it's like, uh, uh, let's see. Nope. I want to do like that meme where people are trying to play that on the flute. That's basically the meme. Let me hear it. Let me let me listen to it. And I'm going to make you sick with it. Uh Let me hear it. Those are the first four notes. Oh, can almost do it. I'll make that sound musical one day. Field of Dreams, Apollo 13, Braveheart, Star Trek. Ooh. Um, Marceline Matro M Morbid. Hey, hey, everybody. S subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And you can also subscribe by, you know, becoming a subscriber. And if you subscribe, you've, you've subscribed. And once you've subscribed, I will subscribe you to my subscription. Thank you. Let's try to play woman. hear it i do have the afro for it uh if i think of a musician battle over james horner themes and i have my sense mm, it may not go well for you love you though thanks phenomenotics you would probably destroy me at uh uh james horner but listen listen to thank you listen i'm playing i'll play the flute part on the guitar so it sound metal how long have I been playing for? Ah, about 40 minutes. I think. Um, anything that other than James Horner songs, I would have to tap out, though. <laughs> Fair enough, Phenomenotics. I didn't know this was a James Horner exclusive battle. <laughs> Oh man, uh, what are the questions? I'm just only playing songs I don't know how to play today. That's what we're doing. But Phenomenonics, what about this? Thank you. 
Wait, I got lost in my Kansas. Uh, do I take any requests by chance, says Marceline Morbid. Yes, I do. Cannot guarantee I'll play it right, <laughs> but I will learn it. I'll learn it. I'll try to play it. I'll try to learn how to play it. Uh, I might actually know how to play it. There's a lot of songs knocking around up here, so uh, I might actually know, but <laughs> chances are no. But go ahead. Please send me your request. like this song this song is the, the greatest riff ever invented and it sadly was is a ted nugent song <laughs> it's it's the greatest rock riff only to have been invented by the biggest moron in the rock in the world. That's, that's wherever I, I have my room, right? good one that's a good request thank you very much for requesting that because i i know it in my head so i found it on the guitar uh evangelist that's uh, evangelist for you uh in the morris style evangelist i haven't grown my hair out yet though says Phenomenotics. I, I, I would, I'd like to play uh, uh, some Vangelis. <laughs> right? Vangelis also did the soundtrack for Blade Runner. How about that? That's pretty cool. Um... doing that before uh <laughs> sort of <laughs> i was doing this look when you're a kid in high school and you have a guitar you you will eventually be like my fingers are so sausagey They're so stiff. I need to. I need to loosen up. I need to do this. I need to crack my knuckles. Also, I should probably just practice every day here, hanging out with you guys, and then I'll get better again. I used to play professionally in bands and stuff, so now I play for my live stream professionally in my own one-man band. 
What's my Twitch? Marceline Morbid, it's Aristotle Full Throttle. You can go find me at twitch.tv slash Aristotle Full Throttle. Please subscribe and please consider uh, subscribing for $3 a month because that way I'll have a better uh, computer <laughs> eventually. And I'll, I will, you're, you're paying me to get better at guitar, and I appreciate that. <laughs> You almost got Hendrix with your guitar, but it went full Vangelis. I almost did. Will is here. Is this Will? Uh, I'm preempting uh, Colleen's intro, but then I'll get to it. You got the touch. Is this Will? You got the power. Is this Will? Yeah. Thanks for finding me. Spoiling everything. It's oh, And I killed Sparky too. <laughs> I forget how that one goes. Thanks for finding me on Twitch. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me, Aristotle Full Throttle. We're just playing songs. We're just playing Celine Dion singing My Heart Will Go On. Uh, so. Insert meme there. <laughs> um, I'll get better at these songs, I promise. I'm just not familiar with them in um, on my hands, in my head. Very familiar. I got a I got a audition tomorrow. And uh, I'm excited. It's not on guitar though. It is uh, as an actor. I'm going to be acting. I also saw Shakespeare in the Park the other day. I saw Prey. You guys see Prey? The movie that's like a prequel to Predator. I saw that. I saw Shakespeare in the Park. Shakespeare in the Park. The guy, though, that played, it's Macbeth. You're not supposed to say Macbeth. But it was the Scottish play I was watching. And the dude who played Macbeth sounded like, I'm not, I'm not joking, and I'm not saying this as an insult. It's just an observation I had. He sounds like SpongeBob. <laughs> he sounded like this. Everything he said was sound like SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I thought, I thought he sounded exactly like he had the timber in his voice that sounded like exactly like SpongeBob, and I was really impressed with that. And he also knew a lot of words. He said a lot of words. Do you know anything by obituary? Uh, I, I do. I wish though. I wish I did. I wish I knew what that song will go on. <laughs> <laughs> is well says good luck i'm just exited about watching prey you're you're just not excited about watching prey just kind of over the franchise well will whoever directed listen here's my long and short of my review if you guys have not seen prey yet listen you can wait <laughs> you can wait it, it, it's 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 not it's like this it's like this. Let me let me tell you what Prey is like. It's like this. It's not Eat, Pray, Love. It should be that should be the next one. That's the sequel to Prey. Eat, Pray, Love, but P R E Y. Uh, also, when people have like that thing in their kitchen, a sign that says "Live, Laugh, Love." Prey is not a great movie. 
It's a movie. It's just a movie. They didn't do anything special to make it a good movie. They just said, hey, let's shoot what's on the pages. John McTiernan directed the movie 1987's Predator. It stars these hulking, gigantic, larger-than-life super soldiers, right? And it, the theme there is this hyper-masculinity, this excessive, strong, these big, big, strong men that all talk like this, and they can kill anybody, and they, they can get him. But then they're all picked off one by one by this secret assassin, this, this dark assassin. And you're like, woo, who, who could kill these guys, right? So it's like, it's, it's kind of built in into the DNA of the movie, of the movie Predator. The soundtrack, phenomenonics, you'll know this. Who did the soundtrack for Predator? You will know this, and I know you will. This person did the soundtrack for Predator, and it's got all these uh, really... Uh, I don't know how to play it, but <laughs> it's got drums. It's very militant. Everything's militant about it. This part of the DNA, it's like the backbone of the movie Predator. When you're watching it, it, it just sets the scene. It's in the jungle. It's all in the jungle. So there's like this vulnerability of like being in this engulfed in this this jungle. And just it's just a scary plot. This is a very scary plot. Um, and the movie Prey doesn't really ca- like emulate any of that. It doesn't bring any of that into it. It just goes, hey, the movie Prey, directed by Dan Trachtenberg, and I think he co-wrote the screenplay, he was just like, I remember the Predators like to do this, Predators like to do that. How do we make a movie with just based on my memory of what Predators do? And he didn't watch, in my opinion, he didn't go back and watch the movie Predator to see what made Predator a good movie. You see what I'm saying? He didn't like absorb what's good about the movie Predator, not just the alien that likes to kill people. He didn't get the overall thematic, uh, the meat of the story. Yes, you are correct. <laughs> Alan Silvestri did the, um, that was a John Williams lick. Tomorrow I'm going to check the, out a rock academy. That's pretty cool, Marceline Morbid. Metal Titanic is ripe for parody. <laughs> Um, so the sec- so the movie Prey doesn't have that constant intense soundtrack which really <laughs> I don't know how you just forget that part about the movie like if you watch the movie Predator it is just constantly banging on your face it's like this military thing it's like it's very driving um, also the movie has suspense it has slow reveal of the Predator this movie is just like yeah, it's a movie it's just a movie back to the future uh <laughs> Like that, right? We're just doing metal soundtracks today. The theme, main theme from the Abyss by Alan Silvestri would sound amazeball it's in power chords. You know what? Let me hear that song because I, I don't quite know that one in, off the top of my head. The Abyss. The Abyss. Let me hear this. Main title theme. It's like, boosh. I remember it go like this. Boosh. Boosh. Right? Let me see. What's the main? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember now. Whoosh. 
Dude loves snare drums, man. <laughs> Alan Silvestri is all about them snare drums. Let me see the Predator. Predator. Um, so I would say that Prey, not worth it. Very sad to say. I wish I, w- I was looking forward to something like that. Some The Predator franchise tapped out at two. Predator 2, not bad. I think Predator 2 gets what makes Predator 1 good. Predator 2 understands what makes Predator... It's not that as good. It's about half as good, maybe. It's underrated, I would say. But Predator 2, uh, which I want to watch tonight. I'm going to watch Predator 2 tonight. It's on Hulu, I think. But it gets... It gets it. It understands what makes a good Predator movie. I th- I think. I think The Predator... It just get, when you start to get with like super predator and like these giant, I'm sorry, I'm I'm not trying to invoke Hillary Clinton right now, but I'm talking about like the they got the massive ultra double size predators and it's like come on, let's get we're just getting stupid now. Just stick with the the idea, stick with the feeling that you get when you're hunted by a predator. What else? Let me see if I can. Uh... What else? Let me see. I'm going to listen to the Predator soundtrack. Predator. Main theme title from Predator. Yeah, here it is. I'm going to learn this right now. I'm excited. There's lots of dramatic strings. That sounds pretty cool to me. And he goes like, he does like, he goes like, Metal Predator. Oh, this is cool. Prove Alan Silvestri, you can go ahead and make some more music if uh, if I was in charge. Phenomenonic says, you know, I actually saw Alan Silvestri. Here's another story about when I saw Alan Silvestri in person. I was I was going to see Avengers Endgame, right? And then I'll suddenly, uh, I've told this story many times on the show before, but if this is your first time here, thank you for being here. Welcome. Subscribe, like, share. Please do that right now. I'll tell you the story. Okay, great. So I was at the... Uh, the premiere of Avengers Endgame at the Arclight Cinerama Dome in Hollywood, right? And it's like 10 p.m. on a Thursday because I'm the excited crowd. I'm part of the excited crowd. This is the prime time to go see a movie because it comes out on Friday. But, you know, you all know that the last two shows on Thursday night, they show the preview of the next day. So I I always go Thursday night when a movie comes out on Friday night because that's the crowd that wants to see the show. That's the crowd that is there dedicated to the 22 movies that it took to get to Avengers Endgame. And when I was sitting in my seat, suddenly... Out comes the usher because at 
Arclight, if you guys don't know, they would have an usher come out and introduce the movie. Very classy. They say, hello, everybody. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today, you're going to see this movie starring these people, blah, 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 X, Y, Z. The exit lights are over there. Go get some popcorn. They come out and they do the thing, right? And it's really cool. It feels classy. It feels classic Hollywood. So this guy came out, though. He had a infinity gauntlet. I'm talking about the usher. He came out. He had an infinity gauntlet with, like, all the lights, all the stones glowing and he said ah welcome everybody to avengers endgame and uh, i have the infinity going ha, ha, ha and with the snap of my fingers i'm gonna bring out the directors of the movie anthony and joe russo and he snaps his and then anthony and joe russo for reals actual anthony actual joe russo come out and then they came out and then and then he's like and then they were like all excited the crowd was going crazy people were going wild and I was completely fla- flabbergasted. I was like, how is this even possible? And then Anthony and Joe Russo do a little introduction. They were really nice. They said, hey, guys, you so I'm so psyched that you're here. This is great. We, we've been working on these movies for years. And it, it, you guys are the guys who we really want to be around when we're watching this movie. And then he said, "But so not only are we here, but the writers are here. And then Kevin McFeely and Steve McFeely or whatever, the two guys that wrote all the movies, they come out. And they're like, oh, well, the crowd's going crazy. And then they said, oh, yeah, by the way, here come Alan Silvestri. And Alan Silvestri, the, the soundtrack guy, come Alan Silvestri. This is the guy we're talking about right now. We're sitting here going like... You know, we're sitting there talking about Alan Silvestri, and then Alan Silvestri introduced Kevin Feige, and it was nuts. And this is what Kevin Feige said. I did not have the presence of mind to record all of this, but I did get some of it. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me just unmute that. That's all I, that's all I had the presence of mind to, to do. I was like... I was just so flummoxed. I have pictures of them. And right there go Alan Silvestri. <laughs> there he is. Take a picture. Um, so he was there, which was neat. And this is what they said. Kevin Feige. You know what he said after that? He says, anybody here has seen all 22 movies? And then the whole crowd cheers. He says, you're wrong, because this is the 22nd movie, and it's coming out today. You've only seen 21. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. We lost half of our viewers. Metal Predator rocks, by the way. That would make a great cover. Yeah, that would be really cool, right? Very toolish. I do like that soundtrack. It's really cool. Uh, I recommend watching Aronofsky's Mother within the context of the Predator universe. Interesting. I did hear it's a weird movie. I do like Aronofsky. I do like The Wrestler. I do like Black Swan. By the way, The Wrestler and Black Swan are the same movie. Wrap your brain around that. They definitely end the exact same way. Spoiler alert: the end of Black Swan. Uh, Natalie Portman is a is a uh, she's a ballerina, and then she go like this. She jump across the screen like this, and you go, "Oh, did she just die?" And it cuts to black, right? And the wrestler, and the wrestler, wrap your mind around this. You got Mickey O'Rourke. He go like this. He jump across the screen, same exact way. And you go, oh, did he just die? And it cuts to credits. Aronofsky knows what he's doing. He's kind of a crazy guy. He's he self-referential, like David Cronenberg's. Now nah, Mother is questionable, says Will. Well, we got to fight. We got to fight. I had to play it already. Will says Mother was questionable. I hear weird things. That's a really that's a really cool riff. Come on, Alan Silvestri. You know, 
Hans Zimmer is in a metal band. He plays the banjo, and then like all these other people play all weird stuff. Is this Will was not a fan? That's fighting words. Is this Will was not a fan of your mother? What about this, Will? You know this one? Um, and then I might go out on this. I just go out on this note. Uh, maybe I'll play that one. I kind of know it. I kind of really don't know it. The phone's going to die anyway. Let's see. Is this Will? You know this one. I don't even remember to wait. If you're watching the show, you will be inducted into my cult, which is this. Don't be alarmed. It's the cult of this. Here, how about this? Oh, I messed up. Okay, to hear myself. That's how it goes. up again <laughs> it's okay so you liked it is this will is on the right track similar he's close but is the cigar his no It's just a lot of D. It's just a, it's just, they're big on D, that band. Let me see if I can remember this, how to play this song.
don't know how to play this. It's a good song. Uh, I love that song. It's That's the Grudge by Tool, probably their greatest song. I could see it being a Pantera song, but you don't know them either. I don't want to play any of these songs, guys. Listen, I don't know how to play guitar. I'm going to let you in on this secret. I, I'm just faking it. Uh, yeah, that's some really deep tone. like the guitar if you have any more requests if you have any more uh suggestions as to what can improve the show maybe a tambourine maybe a bongo artist maybe some percussion maybe a back line of backup singers maybe a front line of front front up dancers yeah basically i know the songs of theirs wrestlers used as themes <laughs> yeah wrestler themes Sure, and you're a fake James Horner fan. I think you're a real James Horner fan. James Horner's great, though. James Horner, didn't he also do that one? He also do. <laughs> didn't James Horner also do that one? I always think Jack Horner. He was the he's the dinosaur guy. James Horner is the music guy. Well, so far so good, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a productive day. It's been a wonderful day, a wonderful Tuesday. What have, what have you been up to? What are you getting up to tonight? Uh, I'm glad to be here with you, practicing guitar, maybe mildly amusing you, but providing you with some entertainment for your afternoon slash evening slash middle of the night slash morning slash brunch. I don't know when you're listening to this. You can listen to this anytime. It's a podcast, Aristotle Full Throttle, on any platform you listen to podcasts on. Also, you could also just subscribe and watch the replay or the the VOD, the video on demand. You might try Avatar for once. Oh, Avatar. The one problem I have with Avatar is all of the, the movie. There's a lot of problems I have with Avatar. For one is, why did they choose the built-in papyrus font from that comes with Windows 95? Why did they say... Hey, this is a $200 million movie. Why don't we just uh, type up the poster? I think James Cameron himself probably typed that up on when he was typing the screenplay. And then he put like, he's like, what's a good font? And he doesn't know good fonts, apparently. He said papyrus. And he put it on the cover page and they never changed it since. They said, listen, don't tell James Cameron that that is a basic B font. <laughs> If anybody can guess what I'm trying to figure out, I'll be impressed. I can't think of the rest of it. That's a good song. I should learn that one. I should learn all these songs. Let me write this down. Somebody write this down. Joe, write this down. You know this. I think make made me think of Angel. Angel? 
The song ain't like an angel. It's got to be in the Avengers universe. It's not the Avengers. It's not the Avengers. It's also from a 1987 movie. Anybody can guess this? Show's over. I could probably play it better, and if I play it better, then you'll be like, oh, I know what that is. Credits. Playing along with the soundtrack right now. Octopus. He's got it. He's got it. Oh, there's it. Welcome to my practice, ladies and gentlemen. It sounds so good when you don't know how to play a song. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. Uh, just remember, the angel sounds like I am mistaken. Robocoptopus, yes. Thank you. Please put down your weapon. Uh, the year helped, but it clicked at the same. All great motifs. Yeah, it's really great. <laughs> That's Robocop, and uh, that's the show. Thank you guys for being here. I'm happy to mildly amuse you, entertain you, have a good time, chat about movies from 1987, including Predator and Robocop. By the way, John McTiernan just was killing it in the 80s. He did Predator and Die Hard back-to-back. Are you joking? Predator and Die Hard. The same guy. I always think about that about David Cronenberg. He did... The Dead Zone and The Fly back to back. Really good. Let's go out. Let's go out with a. Thanks for being here, Phenomenox. It's all about the. It's all about how you Metallica. Thanks for being here. Thanks for st- uh, streaming, says Phenomenotics. I'm happy to do so, and I'm happy to be here every day. Uh, it's been an inconsistent time. It's been an inconsistent summer. So just hang in there. 
check out the notifications add put on the notifications click the button push the bell tell your friends to go to hell no, i'm just kidding it just rhymes you know uh have a good one i'm gonna play, play an italian guy it's a me i'm so italian sadly undertaker used kid rock and not the metallica song for that theme that's sad but also true play this song and then just to amuse myself because I need to practice it and I haven't been playing it so I'm going to play it uh, on the outro and you can stay or not. <laughs> you can stay or you can stay you can go. I'm going to play this school Can't quite get it can't quite play it yet but i will i will uh, what who am i mark Marin playing the guitar at the end of the podcast who am i i'm aristotle full throttle thank you for watching <laughs>